Hi, welcome or welcome back to my book sanctuary. I'm Bianca and I wanted to update you on my reading from the 15th of March to the 22nd of March. So in that week I ended up reading six books and I just wanted to quickly go through them with you. And the first one was Packed in the Penalty Box. I really like this. This is an ice hockey Omegaverse book and basically Molly's forced to go to a ice hockey game. She's a student in the UK and one of the players goes through the boards and lands on top of her and Grayson is currently playing in the UK because he got in serious trouble in the NHL so he's being forced to leave America to sort of play for this new team in uh, the UK to prove himself so he can go back eventually to America and hopefully a team will pick him up. And him and Molly start this sort of relationship and they're very attracted to each other. And Grayson feels alone at the moment, so he really, really enjoys Molly's company. Then Molly goes through a heat, so they spend it together. And then one of his pack mates shows up and she had no idea he had a pack at all. He has three other alphas part of his pack who live in the States. And because of all sorts of reasons, the pack are having issues at the moment and one of their members is in the UK and the other three are in America and Grayson sort of feels like he's been abandoned and I don't blame him. And two of them still play in the NHL, but another one had retired and he was like their pack leader and manager and he was trying to salvage Grayson's relationship. But I really like this because, you know, Molly was under the impression she was always going to be one alpha kind of omega, but uh, that didn't happen. And she's kind of all over the place because her future's now sort of in jeopardy. Because at the end of the day, she's an omega, they're alphas. She sort of has to do what they say and she doesn't want to. And yeah, I really, really loved this. It was very sweet. Very sweet. There are a lot of ways it did remind me of Deceived by the Gargoyles, but it was slightly different. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. Then I ended up reading Not Ready. So this is part one of the insurance security. And basically Vale is heavily pregnant. Um, I do think her pregnancy stayed in the same spot for too long. It's like time passed, but she stayed the exact same gestation the entire time. It was really weird. That was probably my main complaint about that. The pregnancy just sort of didn't add up in my head. I mean, time might have passed really quickly, which I'm pretty sure it did. But I don't know. It just, it, it was weird. But Vale's heavily pregnant. She's about eight months pregnant when we meet her. And she's currently a bit down on her luck. She works in this bar. Uh, she's got no money. She's got no alphas, which is a bit unusual. Most Omegas cannot fall pregnant outside of a heat without a pack. And she did. The baby daddy disappeared after they had a one night together. And, you know, they spent months together and she thought they were getting closer. And then he just upped and disappeared. And then she found out she was pregnant. And to make things more complicated, she's had a relationship online for the last couple of years because she's like this cam girl. And one of her clients, who really isn't one of her clients, they have been talking for years and they've basically fallen in love with each other, but they've never met. And so anyway, because she, poor Vail, she gets a stalker who is a ding dong and he makes her laugh hell. And so she's sort of forced to go to, what was his name? Bishop. So Bishop is the guy who she talks to on the cam site. And basically she has to go to Bishop for help. And luckily Bishop is like this security mercenary expert dude. And he has two pack mates, Holt and Mercer, and they, their their home is kind of on like a, a compound security place. So she, at first she's like, what the hell am I doing here? Um, I don't know if I should be here. And then basically Mercer straight away sort of thinks that she's here because he needs a... 
He needs someone to pretend to be his fiance so he can get his inheritance from his family, which is like an obscene amount of money. And so he thinks Vale's there for that. So he asks her pretty much that, you know, or goes through the details of them going to get married and stuff. And then she's like, excuse me, I think this is a mistake. And then Bishop, you know, Her and Bishop start up a relationship and they're really cute together. And then things start happening with the, with the stalker and, you know, there's a bit of a mystery behind it. And, you know, a few of his members, Bishop's security team are helping and they're really interesting. I really found them really interesting. But then I moved into the second book and with this one, I don't want to tell you overly too much but I do like how the first one finished because it was on a cliffhanger but I I thought it was going to go a particular way with the cliffhanger and it didn't so I liked that and then in the second one I don't want to tell you too much but the baby daddy shows up and life gets complicated and then everybody's trying to will eliminate this stalker dude who is becoming more and more of a problem to Vale Vale is uh, going to have this baby any day now. It's a daughter, Aurora, she's going to name her. And, yeah, it's it's nuts. But I enjoyed this. It was fun. And I really liked the little twist. And, yeah, it was, it was fun. Fun time. Then I ended up reading Not Your Princess. So this is Pack Origins Part 1. And in this one, it's kind of like an Omegaverse apocalypse situation, though I will say the apocalypse is happening, but it doesn't really feel that dangerous. But basically, she... Maya is an Omega who lives in this Omega Palace place, and it's an abusive place for Omegas. And in this world, Alpha's an Omega... just... Alphas basically force Omegas to do what they want and Omegas are sort of put in a box and kept there. And poor Maya is a bit different than everybody else. She was older when she came to the palace and she can defy a bark and Alpha's dominance basically and um, might do what they say and that puts her in big danger. And anyway, the crash happens, which is like the end of the world. It's, you know, all the power goes out and she ends up at this farm. And the farm is different. Again, these mercenary soldier guys, alphas, all live there. And Damon is an intriguing alpha and there's a whole thing with this series where there's three books and it's basically about the crash and how it all happened and so Damon is a prime alpha and we learn more about what that means and why Maya is special but it's basically outside problems with the palace and then the guys trying to figure out what they all mean to each other as well because in this world packs don't exist um alpha is a single solitary people and they treat Omegas horribly that's it (laughs) there's no such thing as packs and anyway I really did like this um it was a little bit too smutty can't believe I just said that but it did have a lot of smut in it and I think it was a little bit excessive but hey each to their own whatever um I really enjoyed it but then I moved into the second book and this one is not your problem and Lexi is the sister of Leaf who is one of Maya's alphas and she's meant to be a beta but then she finds but she's basically bringing sort of suppressing her omega self and anyway the main complaint I have about this one is it was very very similar to the first one um Lexi was very similar to Maya she ended up being almost a cut like a copy of Maya and Sam I get he was also another prime alpha but he was a little bit too much his history was a little bit too much like Damon I mean there was differences but yeah the second book was 
awfully similar to the first, a bit too much for me. And I liked it, you know, there's things going on though, and it really intrigued me with the crash and the palace and the big threat that they sort of have and finding out more about Maya and Sam because Maya and Sam are siblings and but Sam sort of disappeared and that's why Maya was treated horribly. There are trigger warnings in this, so just watch watch the trigger warnings. But yeah, it <sighs> my main complaint with the second one, it was just felt way too similar to the first book. But then I moved on to Not Your Possession, which is the last book I wanted to talk to you about. And this one, Ava lived at the palace and she was a friend of Maya's. And Ava and Carrie, Carrie is a male Omega, so he was treated absolutely horribly in the palace. And basically they are rescued by Maya's alphas. So they come back to the farm, but there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of problems and things are escalating with the palace and secrets are getting revealed. I will say this one is awfully smutty as well. But with Ava, she is complicated. The twins are like these military assassins. Like they're almost feared by everybody. And Ava has a past with them. And they're her mates. And but she never said that. So she Ava pretends to be this perfect Omega princess, uh, put together. Docile, um, there's a bit more to Ava than meets the eye, and I like how that all progressed. See, I do like Ava's story because it was a, it was different to a degree to the first two, um, and I liked that. Her alpha was really interesting. Wolf, Wolf was like this feral alpha who'd been tortured for years, and there's this whole history with him which was really interesting, but he is extremely dominant very dominant and um he's attracted to Ava but he's also attracted to Carrie and Carrie is this male Omega who's always had a thing for Ava and they have a relationship but they don't really have a relationship (laughs) they don't really talk to each other but they're always together it's really weird (laughs) but I like to and yeah and the twins get involved and things start happening with the crash and the Omega Palace and what all went on there and it basically set it up for the next I assume series books about other people and friends and stuff so I enjoyed this it was fun I didn't I did like it but yeah it was mostly an Omega verse week with a nice hockey romance thrown in there for shits and giggles but yeah for the most part it was just an ordinary reading week but anyway thanks so much for watching i really do appreciate it that's all i've pretty much got to talk to you about and i shall catch you in the next one thanks guys bye